On this episode, our goals are bigger than before, but also we're diving deep, baby, but perhaps a bit too deep as we hit the dreaded cobblestones. <laughs> Hot water. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Christian. This is Lazy Devs Academy. This is the advanced, the advanced Schmap tutorial for all of you advanced people out there. We are advancing uh, in our Schmap tutorial. So let us look at something that we didn't do at the last of the last episode. Let's just do like a review what is just currently happening, where, where we at with our initial prototype. All right, so this is the master plan. This was the plan, the master plan. Okay, so we did the performance test. I, something I want to maybe do here is just clean up this format a little bit. So question, how many bullets can we even make? Answer, around 750. Uh, but actually more like 500. 500 is our, our uh, bullets budget. Question, how much, per, uh, how much performance does background eat? Answer, <laughs> a lot. And we actually, uh, when we arrived at the 500 bullets, we factored that in. Uh, we figured out uh, around 25%, 25% budget. Then we just finished the scrolling prototype, which is amazing. So question, how long of a level can we even make? Answer, answer, well, we, initially it was 60, it was just one minute, but we stretched it out. Now we have a system that is technically theoretically possible, like we can make infinite number of levels, it, they will just get quite repetitive. But I, what we did, they figured out that a good goal for our level is gonna be six minutes. And we have the tech. We have developed tech to make six minutes work, hopefully. Question, what's the scrolling speed? Answer. Uh, that's something that, again, we didn't quite do in this episode, but you know, just by playing around something that we a value that I personally found myself being com com comfortable with is kind of a 0.2 uh, to 0.3 scrolling speed felt okay-ish. And if you like different scrolling speed, if you feel like you want to have something else, you go ahead and you do you. Do you. Uh, this is kind of like uh, your tuning dial here, right? Uh, we still have to create our own tile set. That's something that we have not addressed. And I'm going to just get it out here. And I'm going to introduce a fifth prototype. Building the mm, level. Uh, can we make a level? Can we have a compact? tile set. These are kind of like things that we're gonna do in the future uh, once it's it's time. We're about to do the weapons of movement prototype and eventually I want, once we start building the level, I actually like, I don't want the level to just scroll past me and me just passively sitting there and watching. I want to be able to like move my ship around it. So we, I want to actually, for the fifth prototype, I want to just take the scrolling prototype and this movement prototype and I want to merge them together so I can fly with my spaceship with my uh, jet above the level. And there's, there's two secrets. Secret tech one and secret tech two. What are the secret techs? We're gonna go back to these later on. We're definitely gonna need kind of like a second version of that map prototype that we just worked on, but today, Today we're gonna to working on the third prototype, which is gonna be question, can we make basic movement and shooting feel nice? Uh, and this is a bit of a different prototype than before. Previous prototypes were just really answering these kind of like questions that we just didn't know. We just didn't know how many bullets and we just didn't know, you know, what kind of level we wanna make. These were just really like unknowns for us. This question is kind of like a bit of a different question, right? It's not like we don't know if we can make basic, we, can, we know that we can, but we just have to develop this. So this is more of a, it's not really a question, but it's more of a task. Make basic movement and shooting feel nice, <laughs> exclamation points. Uh, we kind of have to figure this out. And there's some subtasks, another task, is, uh, and if you watch the Schmapp words video, you know what I mean, what I'm talking about. I'm talking about normalized diagonals. 
Okay, and actually let's us split this first task into two tasks. Feel nice. So let's basic movement feel task, normalize diagonals, uh, task, um, uh, make shooting feel nice. Okay, basic movement, normalize diagonals, diagonals shooting. These are kind of the things that we're trying to figure out. And then here in the fifth prototype, we can also change this into a task. Uh, and yeah, and then explosion prototype, yeah, that's also going to be a task. Um, make a juicy procedural expl uh, explosion. Yeah, we are not no longer, like these prototypes are kind of different from these prototypes. And we have to acknowledge this, but still we want to define something that we feel like, okay, we're finished now. We want to each prototype to have a goal that we drive towards to that allows us to at some point say like, okay, we're done here. We don't want to just keep adding more stuff because then it's just like making a game. Okay, good. So today, basic movement feel nice and maybe normalize diagonals. Let's see. Okay, so let's just create a new file. We're gonna go save and let's just call it move. Okay. And then let's just try to write it right away. Let's write a function uh, in it and function draw easy piece of breezy function update. And okay, so now. The nice thing the, about the fact that we created a mock-up is that actually some of the art that we need to do is already finished. That's kind of nice. We don't have to stop and make art. We already have some art. So I prepared something here. I'm gonna drag and drop this in here. Boom, shakalaka. This spaceship is, <laughs> you're probably familiar with the spaceship, with this uh, sprite from the logo of this tutorial series. Um, the, I, that was something I just created uh, uh, in the mock-up. Uh, I already talked about the mock-up a little bit, but now also <clears throat> created a little bit set down and created like this banking animation. Uh, we're gonna talk about this banking anim animation later. That's that's not something that we're gonna do today. Today, we just want to put this on the screen and move it around with our keyboard. So let us go, let us go, let us, let us create two variables called px and py. Um, I'm gonna show you, uh, I don't know if we did that before. I just wanna, I, maybe I, now is a good place to do this. So you can do something like this. You can define two variables in one line or even more, three, four, and so forth. That's something that uh, Lua can do. You just have the names of the variables that you want to define, comma separated, then an equal sign, and then the values that are assigned to them. So like if you have something like this, then 32 gets assigned to X and 64 gets assigned to Y. You can and you can do you know you can do an, like an endless line of this. So this is the equivalent of this is um, px is equal to two. This line, this one line, is the same thing as these two lines. It's basically the same. There's subtle differences, and we can discuss the differences when they <laughs> come up. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like a compact way of assigning a whole bunch of values to variables. So we create a px and py, and then a draw function. We're just going to draw uh, spr. Uh, we are going to draw this spaceship, this is, uh, well, this, this jet, uh, sprite number five at position px, py. Um, then this, this is a bigger sprite. We already had that, I think. We made bigger enemies in the basic shmup tutorials, and, but now everything is bigger. Bigger than before. <laughs> and uh, so this is now, um, you know, two sprites. In the final game, we're probably gonna use super sprite SSPR, but for now, we're just gonna use this simple sprite statement. Two, two, two tiles across and two tiles in height. And then just run it, and yeah, there it is. Um, something I'm not doing here is I'm not clearing this, the screen. I'm just gonna clear the screen. I want to have a nice blue 12. Bam! There we go. We're basically finished. This is this is this is the game. <laughs> okay, so our job today is to make this ship move around. Okay, we already did that. So we're going to do like a very um, uh, simple solution for this. Btn. Uh, now something you can do is uh, in this btn, I don't know if I did that before, but you can use these kinds of special characters. Btn shift L will create this sign where it goes arrow to the to the left. <laughs> uh, and that's kind of like the left button. I think this is easier to remember than the number of, of the buttons that you're pressing. I think that's 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 okay. Um, then 
Um, now, I also want to have like a speed variable that defines how fast the ship is moving because one of the things that we're really concerned about is how fast is our ship actually? How fast are we should be uh, should be able to move around the screen? That's a difficult question <laughs> as we're going to see in this soon. So I want to just have one variable that changes the speed, and you know maybe later on we're going to have a f f ability to uh, focus fire to slow down our ship when it's focus firing. So definitely we want to have the speed of our ship on a variable for sure. Um, and so the way we're going to do this is like, uh, so if we're pressing left px minus equals spd. Don't worry, we're going to optimize this very soon. I just want to have something on the screen. Right, up, down. So this is shift L, shift R for right, shift U for up, and shift D for down. It's, it's very easy to remember. Pico 8 is, is a nice nice development environment. Uh, for up and down, we are no longer changing px, uh, we are changing py, and for down, it's plus spd. Easy peasy for breeze. Again, something that we absolutely did in a basic schmap. Showcase, let us run this. Beautiful, oh yes. Look at how cool this looks, nice. Let us do the to-do list in here. To-do list. Make basic movement feel nice, normalize diagonals. The, I want to have the tasks in here. <clears throat> Good. Now, if you remember the doggy zone last time around, something I said is, what about slower movement speeds, you know? What about 0 0.3? Now, fair warning, this entire episode will only really work in 60 frames per second. I'm recording this in 60 frames per second, hopefully. I will release this video in 60 frames per second. So if you wanna know what I'm talking about, you probably want to change to 60 frames per second right now, just to kind of see, because we're gonna, we're diving deep, baby. Saving this, run. Okay, this looks this looks okay. I mean, it's slower, but it's smooth. But what have what is? Why is it so jittery? It's super jittery. It's like driving over cobblestones, you know. That doesn't feel nice at all. What what is this? What is this? Weird. What about the faster movement speed? Ugh. it's cobblestoning. Sometimes it, it looks not okay, but sometimes it's cobblestoning. Like, wh what is this? Doesn't really happen that much in, on, on straights. On the diagonals, absolutely happens all the time. Cobblestoning. <laughs> I call it cobblestoning. <laughs> so, if you've been working with Pico 8, you might be familiar with this problem. This is something that kind of comes up every now and then. I struggle with this problem myself. I ask around, you know, is there a good solution for this? There's, there's solutions um, being explained, but uh, it's, mm. what is happening here? Why is this? Why doesn't? Why doesn't? Why don't diagonals look nice? They looked nice when it was set to one. That's okay. That looks nice. That looks. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's cool. But then just slightly slower. Uh, it's cobbles. It's already. A bit mushy and then 0.7. So what is happening? Well, maybe to explain a little bit what the problem is, I'm gonna remove the CLS. I'm also gonna remove the SPR. And I'm just gonna go do a P set. PX, PY. I'm just gonna draw a single uh, pixel and I'm not gonna clear the screen. All the drawn pixel will stay on the screen so we can see the, the, the line that we're leaving behind when we're moving our sprite. I'm gonna set it to red. First of all, let us go back to speed one. At speed one, the smooth speed. What does smooth movement look like? Uh, yeah, let's do a CLS zero here at the beginning so it's, we have a black screen, okay? So smooth movement, okay, good, good. Diagonals, yes. So you can see this Perfect stair pattern diagonals. This is what we are looking for. This is what we are aiming for. 
Now let us set the speed to 0 0.3. This is good, this is okay, this is good. I mean, it's slower, but okay already. Like what's what happened there on the corner? Now diagonal. Uh, you see, this is a thicker, this is a thick stair pattern. This is, it. Oh, and what is there? Look at that, ooh, ooh. That, that was good, that was good. That was a good stair pattern that you just saw there. That was okay. If we had that, that would be good. But uh, 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 you see, it's very inconsistent. The behavior, the, the patterns we're seeing are inconsistent. Sometimes we see a thick diagonal. Sometimes we see a nice, perfect, thin diagonal. Sometimes it's like this weird, like, I don't know what's that there. Yikes. So we have a bit of a grid. Let's imagine these are pixels. These are individual pixels in Pico 8. And our pi pixels in Pico 8 are fairly large, okay? Let us imagine we are perfectly here in the center of this pixel. And when we're going diagonally, we want to kind of like go like this, right? So the pixels that we are going to actually light up, want to light up, are like this. This is this perfect stair pattern I was talking, the thin stair pattern I was talking about. This is like a diagonal movement that feels right, that looks good. That's perfect. Okay, good. But what actually ends up happening is, what if you are not perfectly in the center of that pixel? What happens if we're like here on the edge of that pixel? And then, you know, it's still within this pixel, but it's just like not, not perfectly in the center. It's just like a little bit offset. Then if you're gonna go diagonal, it will look something like this. Oh, let, me, let me look at something like this. This is a diagonal movement that we're gonna go through. And then all of the pixels that are gonna get touched by the red line is the pixels that we're gonna eventually, <laughs> you know, be at. So we're gonna be here, but we're also gonna be here, but then here, but then here, but then here, and then here, you know? And this is this thick stair pattern. Because we are a beginning position wasn't perfectly centered, because our beginning position wasn't perfectly centered, we touched a lot of pixels on the way, kind of, like I'm gonna use a different color. Uh, we touch a lot of n pixels. It's still diagonal, don't get me wrong, it's still diagonal. It's just not perfectly aligned along the diagonals of the individual pixels. It's a little bit offset, and that's why we're getting like this thick stair pattern. That's why it looks like it's cobblestoning. Because uh, the first movement it does is to the right, and then up, and to the right, and then up, and to the right. Like it does, it does diagonally, but the lateral movement and the uh, uh, vertical movement are not syn synchronized with each other. So you get like these kind of like stair pattern and not the, the smooth diagonals where you, in a smooth diagonal you're moving uh, laterally and vertically at the same time. And that's how you get like the thin uh, diagonal movement. Wow! <laughs> Who knew? Why isn't this a problem with other games? Low resolution is the thing that is happening in Pico 8. We have a very low resolution Pico 8, so the pixels are gigantic. So whenever you have like this like kind of cobblestoning effect, then that's really apparent and visible. And in other games, you might just get away with, with just not caring about these things because the pixels are fine enough that you don't maybe see. This is my theory. Um, also something I do to realize is like, okay, why wasn't it cobblestoning when the speed was one. Well, the, the, when the speed is one, it doesn't matter where you are in the pixel. You will always move one pixel to the right and one pixel up, and then you will always end up, you know, in along this perfect diagonal. You will never be here in this pixel because you always move one pixel to the right and one pixel up. So you always jump perfectly along this um, perfect diagonal, this thin stair pattern diagonal and never, um, you know, never do this meandering, uh, the zigzag pattern. So that's why one movement of one or like any in integer movement will look nice and smooth. This problem only occurs once we start moving at comma values. And by the way, something I also want to mention, you have to, we have to also keep in mind that we are always actually at the top left corner of each pixel, right? Like because the, in the perfect center of a pixel, that's actually 
0.5, like your whatever your coordinate is plus 0.5. That's the perfect center of the pixel. When we're drawing things to the screen, we actually always mean the top left corner of a pixel when the value is an integer value. So that's just something just to keep in mind. That's, that's a whole different problem <laughs> that we're gonna have to deal with. So how are we going to solve this problem? How, are, how can we make um, slower movement speeds or like comma value movement speeds? Because we want to have like this fine control over how fast our ship is moving. How are, can we make pull this off while still following this perfect thin stair pattern? And you know, the solution for this is generally, and that's something that you, that's, that's a tip that you see in a lot of like forums on Pico 8, like I've heard people give you this tip, which is a good tip, but it's difficult to figure out how to make this work. All you need to do is to make sure that when you're moving horizontally, you're also at the same time moving vertically. When you move horizontally, you also move vertically. You want to synchronize your horizontal and vertical movement. That's your goal. You don't, the problem with the thick stair pattern is that you're moving horizontally eventually, but they're not moving at the same time. Uh, I will say that um, this is also why this problem is especially bad, I feel, on 60 frames per second, because it really, like 60 frames per second, the screen gets updated so frequently that it really looks like especially jittery, you know? <laughs> also, we have to also keep in mind that um, yeah, uh, we didn't have any cobblestoning moving horizontally and vertically because then we don't have that synchronization problems because we're just moving along one axis. This problem only occurs when you're moving two axes at the same time. All righty mighty. So how are we going to do all of these things that I would just talked about? That is, uh, yeah, let's just, it's gonna be fine. I actually didn't test any of my ideas yet. So this is this is the first time I'm actually tackling this. I didn't solve this problem previously when I did. This is actually genuine me doing development here right now. Um, one of the solutions that I had in the past was just like figuring a good value where cobblestoning isn't that bad. Just so like if you fumble around with the speed values, you sometimes find a value where the cobblestoning is not that bad, and then you just that's that's the speed at which your ship is moving, which is kind of bad. We want to have a we want to have a better better uh, control over our speed. Okay, so the cobblestoning is something that we um, that only occurs on the diagonals. Hey, this is Future Christian, and I just wanted to clarify what we are doing because past Christian kind of played it by ear here. So in order to fix cobblestoning, we need an if statement that detects two things. For one, we need to detect diagonal movement, but also we need to detect whether the direction of movement has changed since the last frame. We have a cobblestone fix in mind, but it needs to be triggered on the first frame of diagonal movement, and we just kind of can't really write that if statement right now. Well, we could write it, but such an if statement right now would be probably a huge mess. So what we are about to do is we're going to do a huge rewrite of the control system. It's gonna be pretty weird and it's gonna be maybe also seem pretty convoluted, but I promise it will eventually collapse down to a pretty neat and simple solution, especially here in the update function. And it will allow us to write that kind of if statement like it's nothing. So hold on to your butts. So I actually want to be able to detect where we're um, going diagonally. And for this, I want to kind of maybe rewrite this whole thing a little bit. Here's a use of BTN that you might not have heard about. BTN, this thing, actually can return a, a numerical value. Let me show you. So I'm gonna uh, bring this back. Print BTN without any, this is the same BTN that we have here, but this time we are not asking for a specific key. We're just saying BTN. And then we're gonna print this on the screen. We're gonna print what BTN is on the screen. And we're gonna see what BTN delivers. You see there's different numbers appearing. So if I press left, it's number one. It's if I press right, it's number two. If I press up, it's four, where is three? If I press down, it's eight. We skipped a lot of numbers suddenly. <laughs> But then the fun thing is that if you press diagonally, oh, it's five, diagonally is five, and di this diagonally is six, this is 10, 
and this is nine. So each of the button combinations that we're pressing has a different number assigned to it. That's kind of nice. But where is three? We never had three. We have one, two, we had four, eight, nine, ten, six, five, but we never had three. Where is three? Well, there is also, this also encodes the fire button. So pressing uh, the O button is the circle button is 16. Pressing the cross button is 32. So these are also encoded here, but again, these are these are big numbers. Where's three? Well, it turns out that it is also encodes when you press three buttons at the same time. So like this is 11, this is seven, 14, 13. Uh, also opposite buttons, so left and right at the same time. There we go, there we have the three. Up and down at the same time, 12. So. Yeah, it, what actually is happening here, it looks like there's a number assigned, assigned to individual buttons, but that's not the case. What is actually happen, happening is this is a binary number. This is a sequence of zeros and ones, and each of the buttons uh, has one of the zeros and ones. And when you encode that binary number into a, like a digital number, like a, like a decimal system, then you get a number and that number changes when multiple buttons are pressed because like, different zeros and ones in this decimal number are light up. And that is kind of convenient. That, I kind of like it because we now have like a number associated with, uh, with a button. I, something I would love to have is uh, have like a, just a variable that tells me in which direction we're going. And each of the different direction of the uh, eight different directions we're going to will just have a number. So we're going to direction one is going to be going up and two is going down, three is going left. I just want to have like something like this. The problem is because of this binary system, we just have some numbers that just make no sense. Like left and right at the same time is a three. And that's, that's, not, a, that's not a thing. That's what, what is there, you know? So this is a bit of a, there is a bit of an issue here. But we can do maybe like a bit of a translation happening here where we can translate, you know, the binary number into kind of like our own personal system of doing things. So let us just do this. So um, I'm going to test some things out and, and create like a table. So one is left, zero is nothing, uh, two is right. Okay, so I made, I make some notes. I'm going to paste it in here. Ooh, okay, let us make, let us make a comment out of it. Okay, so zero is stop, one is left, two is right, four is up, eight is down. And now five is diagonally left up, six is diagonally right up, 10 is diagonally right down, nine is di di diagonally left down. <clears throat> and now we get like the funky combinations that where we kind of have to decide what will the game our, what our game will do when we press a bunch of buttons at the same time. Um, I think it's a good idea to say like if you're going to press left and right at the same time, <clears throat> just nothing will happen. We're just going to stop there. Uh, and if we're going to press up and down at the same time, again, nothing that we're going to stop there. And when we're not going to press three buttons at the same time, then it's like if it's left, up and right, so that's kind of like the half arc basically, then it's fine if we're going to go up in this case. And if we're going to press left, down and right, it's fine if we're going to go down and left up and down. That's just fine if we go left. Kind of like coming up with, oops, there's something wrong here. Uh, it's kind of um, coming up with a sensible reaction to a bit crazy button presses. Uh, those button presses could still happen. Like if you're just, you know, dodging bullets on a keyboard and you might press more than two buttons at the same time accidentally sometimes. And it's fine if then the game uh, gives you like a, useful reaction. Okay, so this is kind of like a list of all of the possible values that we are actually interested in. And we want to translate this list. We want to translate this list maybe in our own system. It would be nice to come up with our own system. And a good way to start that system is maybe to be like, okay, uh, we're gonna actually use the numbers of the buttons. So it's like, um, okay, zero is left. Let's, just, let's, make, well, let's make one offset. So. First, we're gonna write down the PQ8 buttons and then we're gonna talk about it. Uh, one would be right, two would be up, and three would be down. That's the numbering of the buttons. We're gonna shift this all by one. So zero is actually no buttons being pressed. So one, two, three, four. So one is left, two is right, three is up, and four is down. And then we also wanna cover the diagonals. 
So it's going to be, and here I'm going to go uh, clockwise, starting from top left. So it's going to be five is going to be LR, uh, L, L, LU, left up. Oh, I actually can go do something like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, then six is going to be uh, upright. Seven is going to be right down. And eight is going to be left down. Clockwise. I, I guess for you it's going to be... <laughs> It's mirrored because of the camera. <laughs> okay, so now it, like a single number tells us in which direction we are traveling. And the reason I did this, the reason I went through this whole process is first of all, the, that we're gonna have, we're gonna can get away with less if statements. We're gonna see how in a second. Uh, but also now the diagonals are numerically easily separated. So we can just do like, okay, if then the direction in which we're going is five or greater than we know we're traveling along a diagonal and then we can do, ex execute the code that would take care of the um, the cobblestoning. Okay, so let us make this code work first. Okay, so I'm gonna get um, the uh, btn value, btnv, I'm gonna put this into my, into a helper variable so I can play around with this. I'm gonna print the button value to the screen. And now <clears throat> I have to also show you something. We have to, again, we have to, can, like, there's a first thing that we need to do and that's complicated. Um, so if we're pressing if we're pressing left, it's one. If you then also press sh the shooting button, then it's 17 or 33, right? So all of the buttons are encoded in this in this uh, in this value. And we want to kind of like strip out all of the other buttons. We just want to we just want to focus on the the cursor buttons. How are we going to do that? Well, the, we have to do some binary string manipulation. We have to add this here. <laughs> So what is happening here, this is really advanced stuff and you don't really have to understand. It's, you can just treat it as, oh, there's a magic spell and Christian did just the thing that he was talking about. Um, this is an ampersand. So what, I think it's an ampersand, like the end button, <laughs> the end character, I mean. Uh, and what it does is it's a binary and operation. And then this is a 0B111. It's kind of like the binary number 11111. So um, we are taking whatever number was uh, in this in, uh, return, uh, was in this B BTN statement, whatever sequence of zeros and ones we got from BTN, we're taking that, and then we're executing the AND operation here with this number 1111, four ones. And what that does basically is basically it, it does the thing I was talking about. It just throws away all of the values that are associated with the cross and circle button, the fire button, you know, this, the action buttons. We, it, it strips them all out. They will be all zero. It will just ignore them completely. And we are just left with all of the zeros and ones that are associated with the different uh, directions, direction key, the, the arrow keys. Hey, this is Christian from the future. I was not quite happy with that explanation, so I just went around and created this little demo to explain exactly what is happening. If you are not interested in this, this is complicated stuff and probably will not come up again in this tutorial. Uh, so if you're not interested in, you can just skip it. But otherwise, here we go. So on the top, you kind of see the number that BTN is returning. You see the uh, binary representation underneath all the button presses on the button icons. And on the right, you see the actual resulting decimal number. So this is a seven, for example. Now what we're doing is we're taking that number and combining it with an AND operator, binary AND operator, together with that number on the bottom, the 1111 number, the pink one. And so what the AND operator does, the binary AND operator does, is it goes you know, through each individual digit in both numbers, compares the two digits with each other, and then it returns a result at the very bottom. That's going to be the number that we're looking for. And with the end operator, it's like the result is going to be one only if both of the digits that you're comparing are also one. So for example, if I press left, you can see the rightmost entry. Now the upper number is one, and the pink number on that same digit is also one, so the result is going to be one. If I release the button, the top number 
uh, and that digit turns into zero. So even though the pink number is one on this digit, the result is gonna be still zero. So the result is actually that the pink number is kind of like a mask. Wherever the pink number is one, that will just pass through all of the numbers from the original number. Uh, but whatever the pink number is a zero, for example, here, um, that means that it doesn't actually matter what the upper number is. The resulting number will be zero on that digit. This essentially allows us to mask out all of the digits that we are not interested in. In this case, the left two digits, the X and an O digit, and we're only left with the four digits on the very right, the directional buttons. These are the ones that we're interested in. So uh, let us print this and see if that worked. Oops, ah, ah. Let us see if that worked. So we're gonna draw this BTNV. I'm gonna draw it a little bit further down. Okay, so far it works the same, it's always the same, but now if I start pressing an action button, you see the upper value, it changes, but the lower value doesn't change. We successfully stripped out uh, the action buttons from this number. So we're just left with the regular numbers, with the cursor keys. So now we need to just translate the cursor keys into our own system. And for that, let me just like sort this maybe. Let's just sort this real quick. So there's the three, right? Four, then there is the five. And there's the seven. And there's the six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, okay? We just sort the numbers. We sorted the different values. And now we can create an array that translates from one to another. Yeah, so we're just gonna create like, the, uh, let's call it, um, what call it, but, um, <laughs> no, 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 not button dictionary. No, that's not what we wanna abbreviate here right now. Let's just call it but R. That seems, that seems more family friendly. <laughs> but R. Um, so, um, yeah, zero is not going to get anything, and then we are going to go like, uh, okay, one is going to be left, that's so going to be one. Um, right is going to be, uh, two is going to be converted to right, that's going to be two. Uh, three, that's going to be left and right, that's going to be stopped, so it's zero. Uh, and then four, that's going to be up, that is in our system, that is going to be uh, also four. No, no, up is uh, three. Uh, five uh, is diagonally left up. So that is in our system also five, and that's funny. So one, two, three, four, five. We are, we are just currently here, right? So where are we next? So the next uh, entry in this array is gonna be uh, diagonally right up, and our system that is gonna be uh, also six, that's good. Then uh, next, in our system is, um, now we're looking at something that's just up, and that is in our system three. Um, then we're looking at the actual real down, that is gonna be in our system the four. Then we're looking at the nine, that is diagonally left down. So that is for us, and the eight. And then we're looking at the 10, that is diagonally right down, that is in our system seven. Uh, and then uh, next one is down, that is four. Uh, stop, that is zero. Uh, left and right, so one and two. It's complicated, I know, and there's maybe even like a way of doing this, you know, using code, but yeah, just having like this little translation thing kind of helps us. I'm gonna get this out. No, I'm actually going to keep it around. Uh, I want to keep this around. So, you know, you know what, what's, what's what. But I will make the butt R. I'm going to put it in here. Oh man, what did I do? <laughs> how did I land it on this place? Okay, so um, now I just want to print a butt, but, did I, is it double? No, butt R square brackets. I'm going to uh, take 
uh, BTNV as the index, and we're going to return what is on that place in our but R. Uh, we notice that there's a bit of a problem. Oh, wait a minute. We have to we have to print it a little bit further down. Seventeen. Yeah. So when we're not pressing anything, it's nil. So we want to make sure that this is kind of covered. But otherwise, it looks good. So left is left, right is right, up is three. That's what we have in our system. Down is four. Diagonally left is five. Diagonally up is six. This is seven. That's correct in our system. This is eight. That's correct. And now all the weird presses are uh, behaving correctly. Three. Uh, let's see, like this is one. This is two. That's cool. All of the buttons at the same time, we actually have not also um, not dealt with. This should be 15, right? Yeah, 15. We are, we are stopping at 14. We can add number 15 here. That's fine. Good. Okay, so now we did this big, big array, but why? Like this, this seems like, okay, sure, whatever. <laughs> whatever, man, whatever floats your boat. Um, well, now something we can do is create a second array. And this array is going to be um, called dear x and dear y. And this array will just store, assuming the speed was one, it will just show you how much you add or subtract from x or y, depending on the different directions, right? So direction one is left. When we're going left, uh, let's be clear, let's create this. When we're going left, we're going minus one in the x direction, but zero in the y direction. That's, that's going left. That's what going left means. Next one, when we're going right, we're going one in the, uh, we're adding one to the, to the x position, uh, but we're adding zero to the y position. Just like encoding, like translating what the different numbers, different direction numbers mean for x and y addition or subtraction. So let me go through this entire process. So um, yeah, uh, three is gonna be up. So when we're going up, it's zero for X, but minus one for Y. And when we're going down, it's gonna be zero for X again, but one for Y. And then when we're going diagonally left up, uh, now comes the trick. I'm gonna do a little space here uh, because this is how we also later on gonna solve the, um, normalized diagonals but for now let's let's just not let's just not add to, to the complexity of this so going left up uh, left up um, is minus one on here and minus one on here and then going uh, uh, left right uh, up right is going to be minus one on here and one on here um, yeah, 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 yeah. And then uh, right down is gonna go one and one, and the left down is gonna go minus one and one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. And we did all this stuff. We, we, we created these three arrays so we can now simplify all of this. Okay, let me show you what I mean. Um, so we're gonna go with something like, um, yeah, we're gonna just we're gonna just take this. Uh, equals um, this and this, something like this. And then we're gonna go if dear is greater than zero, dear and dear is greater than zero, then um, px plus equals dear x. Like this. This is all. This is our 
this, those four if statements, we compress them into just one if statement. And it's really just like, we can probably even get rid of that if statement. Let's, let's see if this works. Yeah, this works. Cool, 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 cool. So now we have a single variable that tells us which direction we're going. And that variable we ordered is in such a way that diagonals are uh, on the you know, higher numbers. So above everything five and above is the diagonal. And we can also show this by doing a print here. <clears throat> if um, this is greater than or equal, or, yeah, equal or greater five, then diagonal. And we're going to uh, print it on 23. Okay. No, something was wrong. Ah, yeah, I think the order is wrong. Okay, like this. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> Sometimes it's nil. So you can see it, we have now a system to recognize if we're moving diagonally. Nice. Uh, one more thing, because it's going to be driving me insane. I think it, it, we're going to save us a lot of work if we're going to say, but our zero equals zero. I think this would be, this will make things a lot easier. You get rid of the nil problem because sometimes, you know, when it's zero, it tries to access the zero entry in this array and there is just no zero entry. So by just creating a zero entry in the array, we are getting rid of the we're getting rid of the, um, well, we still have to, we simplify the if statements a little bit, like this. And now we don't have to do the if statement. We could even add zero entries in dear x and dear y, and that would get us even more. But you know, for now it's cool. So now we can have an easy way to recognize whether we're moving diagonally or not. But this didn't solve the problem that we were talking about. First of all, we are now moving at a speed of one always, but we can fix this easily by just adding multiply SPD here, which is we're multiplying. No, because you know, we're assuming we're moving at a speed of one, but if we multiply it by the speed at which we're going, we are supposed to go then, you know, if we were going at 0 0.3, then we multiply one by 0 0.3 and then we're gonna get 0 0.3. So now we're moving slowly and you can see it is it is cobblestoning. It is still cobblestoning. We haven't solved the cobblestoning problem. We haven't actually solved it. We just rewrote the movement code a little bit to work a bit more efficiently and we have an easy way to recognize when moving diagonally, but we haven't solved cobblestoning. And this is where we're gonna get to the doggy zone. Yeah, everybody. So yeah, just rewriting this and explaining all this took a bit more time than, than I thought and also explaining the cobblestoning problem. So the cobblestoning is something we're gonna actually tackle in the next episode. And obviously, predictably, um, the doggy zone is gonna be all about challenging you to solve cobblestoning. So there's gonna be two um, doggy zone things. Uh, challenges. The, I think the bigger challenge is the bigger challenge is definitely trying to solve cobblestoning. Come up with cool solutions. I'm actually eager to see what you, what kind of solutions you guys come up with. I think having an ability to recognize diagonals certainly helps with that. First task, the more difficult task, the easier task that I would ask you is to make normalized diagonals happen. And what if you don't know what it means, uh, well, I have a video called Schmap Words, which is a dictionary of different terms that we use for schmaps. And one of the terms is normalized diagonals. I want you to look it up and I want you to find a solution to make normalized diagonals work with this system. I think I, we did a lot of setup to make it easier for you. So just give it a go. And this is also the part where I will say a big thank you to all the people on Coffee who stopped supporting me on Coffee. You are supporting this show on Coffee. Uh, you can also, if you aren't already, you can also start supporting the show on Coffee. And as a 
thank you and a bonus you will get access to new episodes earlier so yes episode number six something that, could, that you could watch right now if you support me on coffee.com slash lazy devs yes 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 sorry I, these episodes these early episodes of the advanced Schmuck tutorial are getting really long i'm sorry about that i just like the time is just getting away from me but I, uh, next time we're definitely gonna take care of the cobblestoning and at the same time we're gonna take care of the normalized diagonals and maybe maybe we also already start thinking about you know what kind of movement speed we really want in our game see you next time around guys bye bye